Okay, this is the last bit of linear programming and also the last bit of decision one. We're going to look at a particular type of linear programming problem called blending problems. You can see here that a factory is trying to make two different types of drink, an energy drink and a refresher drink, planning the day's output. Each drink requires syrup, vitamin supplement and a concentrated flavouring. A table will show the amounts available and the amounts required of those, which we'll look at on the next slide. Before we move on to that though, let's just have a think about what's being decided here. This is the factory manager deciding how much of each drink to make. So our decision variables are going to be to do with how much of the energy drink and how much of the refresher drink to make. So here's the table. There's a few things to watch out for here. You can see here that here we've got litres, here we've got litres, and our decision variables are in terms of litres as well and the sale prices are in terms of litres. However, here we've got the amounts required for 5 litres, so be wary of that. Here also we have a bit of an anomaly. We've got cc and litres here. Well, there's a 1000 cc in a litre, so obviously if we're using these units of measurement, we'll need to be wary of that and be consistent. OK, so our decision variables would be the first step. So we'll let X represent the number of litres of energy drink and Y represent the number of litres of refresher drink. That's the decision that's being made, how much of each drink to make. Our first constraint then, we'll look at this column for syrup. And this is how much we've got with, we've got 250 litres. And remember that these amounts are for 5 litres. So for 1 litre we would need 0.25 litres. So 0.25 times X would be the number of litres of syrup that would go into an energy drink and 0.25 times y would be the number of litres in a refresher drink and we have 250 litres available. So that's our first constraint. We don't normally leave them like this. We prefer to have integer coefficients here. So in order to make these integers, whole numbers, if we multiply by 4, because that's a quarter x and a quarter y, isn't it? We'll get x plus y on the left hand side and a thousand on the right hand side. And that's much better, easier to work with. So there's our first constraint. Second constraint, the next column, vitamin supplement. We can work in units, there's no problem with that. But again, remember that it's two units for every five litres. And our decision variables are for one litre and again for one litre. So X is the number of litres of energy drink, not the number of units of five litres. So the amount of vitamin supplements would be five would be two divided by five, so 0 0.4 times X, where X is the number of litres of energy drink. We need two units for five litres. So 0.4x plus 0.2y is less than or equal to our limit of 300 units. Again, these aren't integer coefficients. This time multiplying by 5 is a sensible choice because 5 times 0.4 gives us 2 and 5 times 0.2 gives us 1. So we end up with 2x plus y and then we have to multiply the right hand side by 5 as well equals 1,500. And the inequality is 2x plus y is less than or equal to 1,500. Okay, let's move on to the flavouring constraint. 
Now here we've got this anomaly with cc and litres, so we need to either convert these to litres or this to cc really. Well, given that these numbers would be very small as litres, it's probably more sensible to convert this to cc. Again, we need to divide by 5, so we get 6x plus 4y, and if we write the 4.8 litres as 4,800 cc. Here we have integers, but because we can simplify by making these numbers smaller, we can divide by 2 and get 3x plus 2y is less than or equal to 2,400 just makes life a little bit easier when we're drawing graphs in a bit. OK, we're nearly there now. We also need an objective function. And that's simply how much each litre sells for. So we established before that energy drink sells for £1 per litre. And refresher drink sells for 80 pence per litre. Again, we haven't got the same units, but that would be, if we use that in pounds, that would be 1, and that would be 0 0.8, wouldn't it? So there we are. We're maximising x plus 0 0.8y. Right, so we want our three constraint inequalities. The first one, the syrup one, x plus y, is less than or equal to 1,000. So draw the line x plus y equals 1,000. Usual method, x is 0, y is 0. When x is 0, y is 1,000. When y is 0, x is 1,000. So we have 1,000, 0, and 0, 1,000. Draw the line through those. And shade the bit we don't want. Well, use the origin. It's not on the line. 0 plus 0 is less than 1,000. So we shade off the bit we don't want, the bit above. The second inequality was 2x plus y is less than or equal to 1,500. So we draw the line 2x plus y equals 1,500. Again, x is 0, means that y equals 1,500. And when y is 0, 2x equals 1,500, so x will be 750. So we get this line here, and again, it's less than or equal to, so we shade off the bit above. The third inequality, the line looks like that, again using similar methods to work out the coordinates of the intercepts of the x-axis and the y-axis. Shade off the bit above. So the three constraints together look like that. And not to forget, we also have two other constraints, the non-negativity constraints. X is greater than or equal to zero, and Y is greater than or equal to zero. So we put those in as well. And now we have our polygon. These feasible regions are generally polygons. When they're closed regions, so this one's a pentagon. We have five sides. This side along the y-axis up to here. Then this side here down to this point here. Short side here. A fourth side there. And then this final side along the x-axis there. So there's our feasible region. And these are the five vertices. Now we know that the solution, the optimum solution, will lie at one of these vertices. We're trying to maximise, so it's clearly not going to be the origin. So it'll be one of these four points. If we draw the objective function line, so we need a straight line of the form x plus 0.8y equals k. Well, if we pick a sensible value here, if we make it, if we make k 400, then when y is 0, x would equal 400. And when x is 0, 0.8y would be 400. So we then need to multiply. 
So we get 0.8 y equals 400. So y would equal 400 over 0.8. Well, 0.8 is into 400. It goes 500, doesn't it? So that's the, the point there. So there's our objective function line. If we now move it parallel until it meets the last point as it leaves the feasible region, that will give us the maximum. And we can see there that it's the point B. That's the furthest point. That's the solution. Use simultaneous equations to work it out. But you can see from the graph here that it's at 400, 600. And we've solved enough of those problems. So now that we've seen how the blending works, we can just look at the solution and it's 880. So there's your solution. And that's how to formulate and then to solve where it's a blending problem. We'll have a look at a few more of these, including some exam questions in the lesson.